Hey friends, my name is Osama. If you're new to my channel, it's all about nuclear science and technology. And specifically this video is part of a series where I go through every single generation two nuclear reactor design. So generation two nuclear power reactors are those that are very popular across the world. And now the world is embracing generation three and soon after generation four reactor designs. All the links to some of my other videos are in the description below. In this video, I'll be focusing on the boiling water reactor, or in short, the BWR. Now the BWR was an innovative design that was one of the earlier designs that came out. And you'll see that now there are iterations of the BWR coming out in small modular reactor form. So these designs are still relevant to this day. Now in this video, what I'll be doing is going through an overview of the BWR, also covering the history of the BWR, how was this reactor founded and why was it founded? Number, number three, BWR fuel. So what makes the fuel in this reactor unique and ultimately how this reactor is controlled. So let's get into this video. All right, so let's start off with a short overview of what the BWR is. Now the boiling water reactor is a type of light water reactor used to produce electricity. It's the second most popular reactor type across the world, second to the pressurized water reactor. And number three is the pressurized heavy water reactor or, or known as the can do. Well, this reactor is very popular in, in Asian nations like Japan and many other nations. Before I get into the technical specifications of the BWR, let's go through an overview of the history of the BWR, how it was born. Now it all starts in the year 1952 when Samuel Utenmeyer, an engineer at the Argonne National Labs suggested that direct boiling of water in reactors might actually be a practical application. Before this, it was thought that boiling that occurs in reactor cores would actually cause instabilities within the reactor. But after suggesting that steam formations could actually help stabilize the reaction, a series of experiments were led by the Argonne National Labs who operated a series of experimental boiling water reactors known as the Borax Experiment Series. This was done at the National Reactor Testing Station in Idaho. So a series of physics experiments were taking place and results from these experiments led to the design and building of a prototype BWR plant called the EBWR or the Experimental Boiling Water Reactor. Now this reactor was located on Rock Road at Argonne, Illinois site. The research reactor proved that this technology had promise and thus it was further developed by a company called General Electric, which in 1957 launched the first privately financed nuclear power reactor. Now this power reactor provided electricity for a city called Velocitos in California. Now later on in the year 1960, GE or General Electric made a contribution to the development of the Dresden nuclear power plant in Chicago. And they also start spearheading large construction projects for boiling water reactors. Overall efforts in research continued over 50 years led to six different designs and iterations of the BWR reactor. So there's actually six generations of this reactor technology. And unfortunately this video doesn't cover all these aspects, but is simply a general overview of the BWR reactor design. So let's get into the reactor itself. All right. So for all of you waiting for the gory technical details of the BWR reactor, let's dive in. So the BWR pressure vessel is very similar to the PWR pressure vessel since they're both cylindrical vessels. Okay, so they look very, very similar. The difference is that the BWR vessel is a little bit more truncated as compared to the PWR. Now, the main feature in the boiling water reactor is that instead of having two water circuits, so two circuits which, which are used to exchange heat, it only uses one circuit. So this allows boiling to take place in the core to produce steam, which can eventually be used to spin turbines and create electricity. Now, why is this important? Osama, what's the difference between one and two circuits? Well, how conventional nuclear reactors work is they produce heat in the reactor core. You know, this is the first circuit where the heat is taken and it is looped in a heat exchanger indirectly connected to a secondary loop. In the secondary loop, you'll see that this water is boiled, steam is produced, and eventually gone off to turbines, which spin and create electricity. In terms of BWRs, boiling water reactors only have one system, so one circuit. So they don't have these steam generators in the middle, which are large heat exchangers that work to transfer heat from between the two circuits. 
Imagine your car. Your car's radiator is similar to a heat exchanger where it's exchanging heat from your engine, which is the core, to the outside environment. And it's, it's using this heat exchanger to keep your engine cool. Ultimately, BWRs instead use drying equipment, which is located directly above the core to help in this process of heat exchange so that moisture doesn't get to the turbines. Now, since they don't have steam generators, costs to construct a BWR are lower than PWRs, but there are other obstacles. The difference is that BWR turbines have to be heavily shielded. So this means the shielding keeps away gamma radiation and also online maintenance of the turbine side is severely restricted. So in a traditional nuclear power plant, you'll see that there is a nuclear side, which is the reactor buildings and the nuclear process that's taking place. And then you'll have a secondary side, which is usually the powerhouse, the turbines and the secondary system. So the secondary system is usually a clean system where you can go in, you can walk in. There's not much radi radiological hazards, but in a BWR, they have the advantage of not having steam generators. So one of the main components, but also this disadvantage that both areas are contaminated. So you have to have certain precautions in the secondary zone as well as the first. All right, so let's talk about BWR and its fuel. Now fuel in this reactor is very similar to a PWR or pressurized water reactor, which is using uranium dioxide in zircaloy cladding. But this fuel is enriched, however, just like PWR fuel, because you're using light water as a moderator and coolant. But what's different about the fuel here is the, the structure of the fuel assemblies. You'll see the fuel assemblies in BWRs are massive. They're a lot larger than CANDU reactors or, or even PWRs, which use fuel rods. So you'll see a BWR uses a large cruciform shaped assemblies. PWRs use fuel rods, which are quite large as well, a little bit smaller. And then CANDU reactors, which is the third most popular design, use fuel bundles, which are the size of wood logs. Let's talk about controlling a BWR. Now what's unique about this reactor design is that control rods aren't inserted from above, like in PWRs and in CANDU reactors. So the advantage there is that uh, you have gravity, which is giving that extra push to those control rods to come down. Rather, in a BWR, control rods are inserted from below. So they come out from underneath using fast acting pneumatic or hydraulic systems. Also, surprisingly, BWRs are simple to control. So you'll see that the way it works is the void coefficient, which is the reduction in reactivity, is used alongside boiling to directly control the reactor power. What, what this means simply is if you want to increase reactor power, you simply circulate more water through the reactor pressure vessel and you suppress boiling deep within the reactor core. So that's a way to increase the power. Now, say you want to decrease the power. What you do is you reduce circulation of the water and allow boiling to basically pull the reactivity and eventually power the reactor down. Now, since circulation of the water is such an important part of the BWR, many BWR designs use external recirculation pumps to supply feed water. Now, as simple as BWR operation sounds, the reactors use much more complex calculations to manage the consumption of nuclear fuel during operation, the two-phase water and steam fluid flow, which takes place in the upper part of the core. Now, this also requires more instrumentation and control. Now, another advantage of the BWR design is that it doesn't use, it doesn't necessarily need to use boric acid and other uh, chemical poisons to regulate the burn up of fission products. This reduces the possibility of corrosion in piping and also other reactor vessels. So there are many advantages that come with this reactor that other reactors have to encounter. So overall, that's an overview of the BWR, the boiling water reactor design. It's a very innovative, interesting design and also comes in a small modular reactor form, which I'd love to cover in another video. Uh, love to hear from you, uh, especially your comments and questions, concerns, which reactor or generation two reactor should I cover next? Uh, maybe you're more interested in generation three or generation four designs, but love to hear from you. Uh, till then, take care, bye.